talked about political rec- correctness in the past, but we've got a very special guest star, Alexis, today. How welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much. So, My pleasure. So, so it's interesting because we were going to talk about a totally different subject today, mm. yet political correctness has just reared its ugly head. And political correctness, really, is just another word for being diplomatic. And in my opinion, diplomatic is just another word for being deceitful. Because you're not really telling people what they actually believe, are you? You're not telling people the truth. You're telling people a version of the truth that, they, that you think that they should hear rather than the reality of what you're thinking. Actually, political correctness is a sanctioned knife of societal destruction. It's a what? It's a, san- it's it's a sanctioned okay, guillotine of, s- okay, of the destruction you, of society. Let, let's, let's get that sort of... Uh, Can you translate that, that, that high-level education, and let's get it down to layman's terms. What it, what that, it means that, is that, that, that... What it means is political correctness is marketed as the thing that everybody should be aspiring to, yet it is the, a sign of a failing society and is the tool of either poorly informed people who think they need to fit in or those with an agenda that they're working on. Alexei, what do you think? I think the, we were talking just before we, we pressed the record button. I think when you're looking at statesmen, uh, for example, politicians that we were discussing a couple of minutes before, I think political correctness uh, can also be changed, turned around and be called PR, be how you present yourself in, in, the, in the public eye. So if you're talking about a politician that should present himself as a statesman and know that he's always on duty and not be naive and lame and think, well, I'll just say anything I can in a Greek restaurant at 11 o'clock in the evening in London and I'll just come out with it and not expect in 2017 for someone to record something on their iPhone and then shove it on Twitter or whatever and the next thing I know I'm out of office. That, that's going too far the other way. In society, I believe that when you are turning nursery rhymes <laughs> into, you're changing the actual words with, or with isn't it? bar bar whatever sheep or whatever it may be, I think it's gone too far. You're, you're removing the personality out of society. I think you're, you're, everybody's turning into some beige, you know, very pale version of themselves. Yeah, it's very bland, isn't it? I mean, that's why I talk about diplomacy. We talk about diplomacy in such a way that we've got to be, you know, you talk about statesmen and they've got to be diplomatic. And the thing is, I, I do, I see it as another word. I'm not telling people the honest truth of what they think they should say, but they're saying what the public wants to hear, which is actually really covering up the truth. I mean, it's, it's, it's why people don't like Donald Trump. Okay. The, the, I mean, there's two, there, again, there, there, the are, there are two issues here. One is political correctness, and the other one is PR. And the, PR might be a subset of political correctness, but PR is something that's very, very important and needs to always be considered in the position that you have in society. But the way political correctness is being used at the moment is to, is generally the society is being told nobody's different. Men and women are the same. Races are the same. You can't use... Why should you use... Why should you have Christmas in England when there are so many other religions and are not being respected? England is a Christian country. The Queen is the head of the church. Of course, people should respect religion. Did you, uh, did you know uh, Christianity? Did you know that uh, last year one of the uh, there's a little shop in Muswell Hill that actually was taken to court? People Sorry, complained this is for about our them. American listeners. Muswell Hill is in London. In London, okay. Uh, it's a it's a little place in North London, and this this place was taken to court because it had English in the title of its shop. Well, actually, I, I remember a few years ago, uh, um, I believe the Red Cross actually took down their Christmas decorations or stopped putting Christmas decorations up as to not offend uh, So the, when the political cultures. correctness starts eroding the identity of the parent state, you have a very serious problem on your hands. Oh, God, you do open the can of worms. Um, the, the, I think you've got the identity thing again. I think the Great Britain, I'm, I'm 46 years old. I now only look like 28. It's not my fault. It's in the genes. 26. Uh, tw- 26. Thank you very much. I owe you another coffee. You look, you look, you look, you look great for 27, but crap for 46. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I have my, end, my sentence was each leg before I... Uh, before if Alexi was uh, here permanently, he'd end up being a national institution. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I really wouldn't go that far. I, I think, I think you've got uh, you've covered in your previous podcast. I think a, a very good point. You've got the also a, a different way, a different way of looking at things. You've got the identity issue. Great Britain 
which funny enough is not used anymore <laughs> no idea why United Kingdom sorry um, the name of its own country can you believe that exactly and that's my point no hold on a second hold on a second no hold on no, 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 Great Britain no, no, and the UK are different he's actually here. he's off here but okay, okay well I don't want to get okay, into okay. it I don't we want to be that right. the, the that point right. I'm talking about is identity if you go to Great Britain or Britain whatever you want to call it Great you, Britain Great Britain you, you, you still have the great it's still great the <laughs> Queen's still around she's still alive and kicking the point is that you do accept that it is a, a society, of, uh, actually a very, very forward-thinking society that has, that has accepted other cultures for many, many years. Other countries have looked to us and gone, how the hell do you do that? And until not so, re until about maybe five, ten years ago, it was working reasonably well overall. And now I think it's now starting to bubble up again because I think we've gone too politically correct now. And we've gone the other way where we're now trying to find our identity but instead of talking about it and actually identifying it and saying no we are Great Britain these are our principles these are our this is our mantra this is what we stand for we're sort of allowing society to try and sort it out by itself and it's obviously not working because the government itself hasn't said look this is who we are if you don't like it very nicely sod off yeah go somewhere else when in fact we don't we've gone beige we've gone sure come in oh, I do beg your pardon did I insult you should I should I be talking to you after the sun has risen I don't want to disturb you sorry you want to go to the mosque or the synagogue or whatever maybe I do oh, I'm so sorry that's political correctness we've gone far too far and you know, if you go to Italy and you decide to play loud music at 11 o'clock in the evening in a small village you probably will be ejected from the village physically, be put into a car and asked to leave straight away. And the other option would be you won't need to leave. <laughs> Depending which village you're in. If you're in the south, it'll probably be sorted out in a different way. So, but here we go. Oh, so sorry, have I offended you? No, I'm sorry. You've come to us. We haven't come to you. It's an and I think that for me is the, is the key thing. We'll accept you. Switzerland, for example, is a very conservative country, very similar to England in many ways, very similar traits, but you do have this understanding where you follow their culture it's a matter of integration and and what's much. what's interesting is is uh, of course when india um uh, when, when the situation happened with India and, uh, and, and the British moved out administratively from India, of course, what then happened, the Indians went, oi, oi, uh, okay, well, we're coming to you then. But what those Indians, they, oi, they, oi. They, they, were, they were assimilated because they were, they, because they were effectively a British protectorate. They, they came, that when they came over as immigrants, they were effectively English and they were proud to be English. This is the thing. And they maintained British traditions. And still today. And, and still and do still in, in many cases. Um, but now people are not integrated. And then, and then, and then actually people, the political correctness says, well, actually, no, no need to integrate. By all means, be yourselves. And, uh, and what happens is, of course, scientifically, people don't integrate naturally this is what the government must bear in mind we have we have things called mirror neurons which which are key to uh, tribal behavior and and what makes people function harmoniously in a society and research has shown that if a person of one race looks at a person of another of the same race their mirror neurons fire off very happily if they're looking at a person of a different race they don't fire or they fire much less. It is scientifically proven, therefore, that we will not naturally integrate because we just don't do it. It's interesting. But I, we can be I'm taught sorry. to. I, th I, thought you, I, I thought I'd get in there in the pause, actually, before you two <laughs> he, manipulate this whole he, conversation. He breathed. <laughs> he breathed. It's interesting because I saw a video on uh, YouTube not so long ago, and it was about, it, I think it was a Swedish commercial of some sort, and it, was, and it wasn't about other cultures integrating into Sweden is how Sweden as a country could ha had to integrate with other cultures so they're asking the Swedish to actually change their culture in terms of to actually welcome other people in so in, in some ways I see it as though you're inviting someone into your home they decide to take over and you just get pushed into the corner you get you get pushed into the spare bedroom and um, that's how a lot of people are actually feeling right now um, which is why there's so much problems about immigration. But I don't want to talk about immigration as such. I want to talk about the political correctness, and let's, uh, let's bring it back to that. But of course, political correctness has come much to the fore because of the immigration. It, it, it has, yes, it has immensely to do with that. It's interesting, I, I did an article yesterday, or the day before yesterday, and I labelled it, um, am I, um, God, I can't remember now, it was, am I being harsh about the fat slob sitting opposite me? <laughs> and um, 
it, it was mainly to get people's attention and it has got people's Was that attention. a real photograph or a library photograph, by the way, on, the, on your blog? That was, yeah, I purchased that photograph. So uh, it wasn't the actual guy. Uh, so uh, you, see, you have seen it. So um, it's interesting. Because politically I've correct. Had, I've had a lot of comments from my previous posts or my previous articles. Yeah, this one, people have refrained to comment. Because just because people see something and we don't say it doesn't mean that they're not thinking it. And what's happening in this political correct world, we are actually asked to keep our thoughts and our feelings to ourselves, not say anything. And guess what happens? Underneath the circuit, it starts bubbling until, um, until you now get... Uh, and, and then yeah. it comes down. So, and, 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 and I say this because... Kind of if you, because I said this because about... Mm. Even about mm. three days before the elec- American election, when Donald Trump was going to be elected... Back again. <laughs> Someone said to me, do you honestly think Donald Trump's going to win? And I said, yes. And I said, why? Because they're silent voters. Those silent voters who voted for him did not say anything because of political correctness, because they did not want to be stigmatized as racists or misogynists or whatever, because they actually believed in, or they preferred him to Hillary Clinton. Yeah, but hold on a second. Yeah, but you, you, you're, you're hitting on, there's another element of that as well. You're hitting about, you're, you're, you've got political correctness and side by side, you've got politicians that are completely disconnected from society. So, you, so you've got one side, you've got people who are afraid to say what they think because they don't yeah. want to be stigmatized. And on the other side, you've got politicians who have made it very, very clear that the myth that they are in it for themselves and they've got no, no even no care or thought about the electorate is actually true. I think, I think all politicians are in it for themselves. I think well, they've made that clear because, because the gap is bigger. Because self-interest is a human behavior. But you see, the thing, the thing with, one of the things with Trump... Huh? Is it not? Is, it's, like, it's, it's, like, it's like very, very forceful tennis here. Yeah. <laughs> but one of the things with Trump is, is that, uh, obviously I agree with what you were saying, but it's Thank about likability. People, <laughs> if people relate to you and they like you, they're much more likely to vote for you. And the fact is, he was gloriously politically incorrect. And that's, to be honest, that's probably what a lot of people really feel like. They, they would like to be able to express their opinions without people jumping down their throats. And there's Donald Trump doing it in front of everyone and giving the finger up to the press and everyone else and Hillary Clinton. So that's one of the major reasons he got elected. But all the polls have got it wrong. All the polls are getting it wrong because pe- they don't know people's real feelings. They don't know about people's real thoughts. Because political correctness has suppressed them from expressing themselves in the manner in which they want to express well, themselves. Well, actually, I disagree with that. People's real feelings don't well, you disagree matter. disagree with me, really? People's real, fi- people's real feelings don't matter. What matters is leadership. The correct leadership is, is not going to have everyone imp- uh, agreeing with you. In fact, in fact, the correct leadership will always use fear as well as carrot so a lot of people will, will just have to shut up and follow it we're not but, talking about leadership though we're talking about people not saying but not being able to say what they really want but to say but free speech is uh, is one of the it goes hand in hand with political correctness and is another sign of a failing society you can't have free speech in a functioning society because any free speech that constantly criticizes weakens the leadership for instance in america you have this idiotic thing where where the senators are still trying to go after donald trump now if you want your country to function in any kind of meaningful way let your leader get on with it he's elected let him do the job yeah, but, and help him. Yeah, but, yeah, but you, again, th- there are three elements here. You're talking about leadership, yeah, which I think you need. Margaret Thatcher was a great example. We spoke about it just before we went uh, uh, live. Yeah. That you've got, you can have people expressing their opinion in society, but in the right ways. Mm-hmm. But I always use the, the kids' uh, analogy. I've got two kids. A lot of us have children. And those who don't, th- think about it. Um, is that when you do have kids, you, the, you know... And they know from a very young age that then you need to have rules and you need to have leadership. So whether it be the parent, the, the, the prime minister. Oh, we are all leaders because of that though. But, but, we, but, but, but I've tried not leading my kids. I've tried to do the uh, hippie Starbucks thing of saying, oh, kids, do your own thing. Let's so see what, what do you happens. do? So what are your kids' names? Rainbow and Star? <laughs> not quite, no. Okay. no okay. Or I didn't call them her fruit <laughs> name or Blossom or something mad like that. Okay. Um, I gave them sort of, you know, like Martin and, and Toby, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, but the point was that the moment they, there are rules and you stick by those rules and you actually follow through, 
I very often I've, I've, you know, I've had to be strict with my kids on certain things and half an hour later I've got one of my sons or both coming to me saying daddy I love you that's half an hour after I put the iron fist down and said end of it stops here but we, the political correctness thing is we've gone to the point where because there is no leadership which you need you need that structure